So I changed some of the settings on my camera, and I don't exactly know if it's going to change the output file type, or if it's going to change the way that it looks, or if it's going to change... I, I really don't know. This is all stuff we're going to have to figure out when it comes time to edit, and when it comes time to uh, export the edited file out into a file that will be uploaded to YouTube. This is all very, uh, well, technical. It's, it's not really technical, and probably not interesting, so I'm just going to move on from it. Let's start the thing. Hey guys, Sean here. So this week I actually have a lot of after work plans and actually on Saturday I'm going to have to work as well so I can't leave everything until like Friday night and Saturday morning to do this video and also I don't really know what to do this video about this week and so I just decided, uh, well it's the only night I can actually do anything as far as recording is concerned so I just go ahead and stream of consciousness a video together. I don't know if anyone actually enjoys that because uh, no one out really outside of my family actually watches these videos, but maybe someday when people are watching them, uh, we will see if people like them or not. Especially now that YouTube TV has been announced, which was announced today, and it's going to be a big deal, maybe, possibly, who knows, we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to actually sign up for it or not. I don't really care about having live television anymore. I haven't for quite some time now. The fact that they managed to get like 80% of the sports channels because they're going to have ESPN and ESPN2 and all of the Fox Sports channels as well, that's kind of a big deal actually. That's going to make it very enticing for people to finally cut the cord. I personally cut the cord like two or three years ago and I've been relying purely on Hulu and Netflix for pretty much everything. Wow. But really, since the only, like, network television shows that I watch nowadays are the CW superhero shows and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC, I don't even really need that much. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy wants to visit for the video. Talking about superhero shows. So since all I ever really watch is the CW superhero shows and Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC, I only need Hulu for that. However, as of this season, uh, CW, they took all of their shows off of Hulu and they put it on their own proprietary app. He doesn't like the CW app. And so, currently, I've only been using Hulu for just Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, the CW app is free, so all of those shows I don't have to pay anything for, and Hulu is like $7.99. And YouTube TV is supposed to have CW and ABC on it, so I would be able to watch all of those shows on YouTube TV. But here's the thing, YouTube TV costs $35 a month, so you would have to take $35 and remove the aid from it that I'm already paying for Hulu, and then that's how much more YouTube TV would be. Now, somewhere I read that YouTube TV also includes YouTube Red. Now, I don't know if that means that it includes YouTube Red shows or if it actually includes the YouTube Red service, because with YouTube Red, you pay $10 a month and you get access to all of the YouTube Red programming, all of the special programs that certain channels make for YouTube Red that you can only see by signing up for YouTube Red, but also you don't get any commercials because your $10 a month is paying basically in advance to remove all of the commercials from the videos that you watch, and that's actually the main reason why I signed up for YouTube Red, because not only do you not see any more commercials, and it makes it a lot easier to get through the YouTube videos that you're watching, because as I've stated before, like, I'm always at, like, slightly over a thousand videos in my Watch Later queue at all times, and if I had to sit and wait through commercials for all of those as well, I would never even make a dent in it. And of course, one of the other main benefits of YouTube Red is that content creators on YouTube get more revenue from YouTube Red watchers than they do from just regular watchers. This is probably due to the fact that it's just money coming directly from the viewer and not coming from an advertisement which plays before the video and then that's got to be split all these different ways and uh, it's just a hassle. So I like that with YouTube Red, not only am I helping out other YouTubers by giving them more revenue than they would if I didn't have YouTube Red, 
but also I don't have to watch all the commercials, which really helps. So if like a YouTube Red subscription is actually included with YouTube TV, then that would be amazing as well. I don't know if they have announced that yet. So yeah, we'll have to see exactly how that works out. Because I'm already spending $18 a month for Hulu and YouTube Red, so if I ended up having to spend, you know, an additional $17 a month to get the YouTube TV and get all the same stuff and then potentially more, then uh, it'd be a pretty good deal. So we'll just see how it works out when it actually goes live and all that. It is funny. Wow. See, this is the thing I don't understand. Like, so they have apparently like wooden chairs, right, that are on linoleum. And I don't know why they can't get the chair next to the table at the, the spot that they want. Like, why do they have to constantly be, like, when they're sitting at that table, why are they just constantly moving the chairs back and forth? Who does that? Why are you moving the chairs that much? You shouldn't need to. You sit at that table every night. You know the distance that you need for the chair to be and the table. Why do you have to constantly move the chairs? It's like they're playing a constant... I don't even think they eat dinner. I just think they play musical chairs and, and that constitutes their dinner. And then usually at some point one of them has to run into the bedroom and back and forth for like three minutes. How terrifying would it be if it turned out that currently there isn't actually anyone living up there? That would be... That would be something. When I first moved into this apartment, it did take like two years before anyone moved into the apartment above. There were literally like nine empty units in this building when I first moved in, and I think that's part of the reason why I was able to afford to actually live here. Here's a funny thing about that. So that was like five, maybe six years ago at this point. I can't exactly remember when I moved in here, but I still, to this day, in fact, just now when I went to the mailbox, I still get mail for the person who used to live here. And the funny thing is, all of the mail she gets is for the United Postal Service Benefits Department. She worked for the Postal Service. In fact, she may still work for the Postal Service, I don't know, but it's just, how could you have worked for the Postal Service and then when you moved, you never told them that you moved? You're there. Just tell someone. Honestly, at this point, I think she must have just died or something and didn't tell anyone. It's kind of hard to tell someone that. Speaking of that, I just went to the post office to check my P.O. box. I have a P.O. box now for my YouTube channel because I like to believe in my mind that I am a huge YouTuber and I need all the various things that huge YouTubers have, even though I just really, in the in the realm of YouTube, I'm a tiny, tiny baby. I just wanna make sure I have all the things in place for when I need them. Like, if someone's like, we need to send you a contract, I'll be like, well, you can just email it to me. And they're like, no, but it's 2017, you can just email it to me, right? And like, no, we need to send it to you physically. Well, you can't do it here because chances are the, the mail person will not put it in the mailbox right or something will happen and it'll get stolen because that has happened here. I once had a box of checks sent to me here and uh, the person that was delivering them couldn't get into the building so they just put them out in front of the door, basically out on the sidewalk. And uh, guess what happened to those? Like seriously, who just leaves a box of checks just out on the street? So since that point, I've had every single package delivered to my work and never had a package delivered here. If I'm on vacation from work or anything and I buy something for Amazon, I use Amazon lockers all the time because I think they're a great invention. See? But yeah, now I have the P.O. box for in case I ever need a P.O. box for anything. And I just went and checked it and there was mail in it for the person who had the P.O. box before. It was tax information from the military. So yet another civil servant that I am getting tax information for. When I actually got the P.O. box and I got the key for it and did all the stuff at the post office, I actually, once we were all done, I asked the person at the post office, so I've been getting this mail for this woman who used to live in my apartment uh, like six years ago, 
And still, to this day, like, once or twice a week, I still get mail for her. Is there anything I can do? And she's just like, no. It's like, great. So nowadays, whenever I get mail for this person, I just, I put it on top of the mailbox. I don't know what happens to it then. I don't know if anyone steals it. I don't know, like, if it gets thrown away. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know what happens to it anymore. I don't know if the mail person takes it the next day and does whatever with it, but... It's not my problem anymore. If I have a pen on me at the time, I will try and write on the envelope, return to sender, this person hasn't lived here for five years, but I don't know that actually does anything. One time I actually gathered all the mail up and I bundled it together and I took it to the post office and I just dropped it into the into the mailbox because I'm like, here, let's, let's see what happens if I do that. And like three days later, it ended up back in my mailbox. I suppose I should have saw that coming because I mean, that's where they were going to send it. I wonder how many times I could send the same piece of mail over and over and over and over and over before anyone actually said anything. That could be an interesting experiment. Oh, here's another interesting story about that, or a first interesting story, depending on how you felt about the story I just told. So yeah, when I first moved here, I not only was getting mail for that postal worker woman who used to live here, but I was getting mail for two other people as well. So yeah, there was this guy I was getting mail for that I don't remember exactly what it was, and then the postal worker woman who I'm still getting mail for, and then there was this girl that I was getting community college information for. Eventually, they stopped and the postal worker woman continued, and I didn't think anything else of it. About six months later, this a bunch of new people started working at my work. There was this one girl, she was put on my team, and I, I sat next to her for the however many months she ended up working there. It was only like three or four months, to be honest, because she kind of kept forgetting to come back from breaks and lunch ever. And so uh, we kind of had to let her go because of that. Because, yeah, if you have a job and you go to a break, uh, remember to come back like after the allotted time of the break. Don't feel like, you know, 30 minutes later you could possibly come back or you know an hour after lunch feel free to walk in and no don't do that that's that's not how you keep a job especially a job where easy to find replacements so yeah like three days after she got let go I received another piece of mail from my community college for this girl that I hadn't been receiving for a long time and then it like hit me wait this is the same name as that girl that I've been working next to for the last six months. That doesn't... wait, what? And, you know, she was of community college age, and I looked up on the internet, and there was only one person in Southern California who had that name. So there is a very strong likelihood that for six months I was sitting next to someone who used to live in this apartment. It's just really weird that for the allotted time that our paths crossed, I didn't receive any mail for her. But then, very shortly after our paths separated, I then received another piece of mail for her. And yeah, of course I never saw her again after that, because why would I? She's a horrible employee. But enough about mail, let's talk about mail. I can't back that up. Buddy's in the litter box again. Uh, here's the thing that bothers me about litter boxes. So litter boxes, as you know, are shaped you know, like a pan, obviously, right? And then the litter box liners are shaped like an envelope, kinda. You know, there's the, the seam at the bottom, and then it's just an opening. And when you when you put liners in litter boxes, it leaves a lot of plastic just hanging over on the sides, because that's not the way things work. It's I don't understand why cat pan liners have to be shaped like an envelope when the thing you're putting them in is not shaped like an envelope. Why is there not, like... A square piece at the bottom and then a, like a trim around it that would it would make things so much better especially because when he's using the litter box he'll you know bury his business with whatever sand is available and then he'll just keep going and then eventually he reaches the plastic and then he starts clawing at the plastic and 
pulling the plastic out and putting ripping big holes in the plastic and eventually there's just a big hole in the plastic and all the stuff is falling out over the into the regular cat pan I just that wouldn't happen if the liner was shaped like the cat pan I don't know why anyone hasn't done that I would do it myself but I'm not some sort of shark tank person so I need someone else to make that. Obviously there's some reason why that has never happened before because if I could think of it, smarter people can think of it. The tidy cat people could have thought of that and there must be a specific reason why it is the way it is. I'm just the person in black and white who's saying there's got to be a better way. I guess what I'm saying is does anyone have Ron Popeil's number because I really need it right now. I don't even know how many people live up there. There's obviously at least two, because if someone was just walking by and then someone moved the chair, that's at least two different people. And I'm pretty sure they have a child because of the toddling that goes on up there. Yes, I know at any point I could easily just go walk up the stairs, knock on their door and introduce myself and be like, hey, I was just curious uh, what kind of animals live up here. But then it might turn out they're incredibly nice people and then I wouldn't have any reason to be mad at them. As it stands right now, I really don't have any reason to be mad at them except for the 30 minutes a week where I do this. Anyway, that's gonna do it for me this week. I can't really think of much else to stream from my consciousness. So if you like this video at all, go ahead and hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos of randomness that I throw out onto YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support the crazy randomness that happens on this channel, go ahead and hit the Patreon link. And with that, have a good however long it is until you watch my next video.